the most underrated deck of 2020. And no, it is not Pendulum, actually. It is Generators. So let's generate some love for my boy Pac that has released this video for me to show you guys the greatest fans in the world. And speaking of the greatest fans in the world, we just hit 30,000 subscribers. I, I want to give a big shout out to every single one of you watching to help me hit 30,000. You guys absolutely love you guys. The Trip family, I love you all. To commemorate this beautiful occasion, I've decided to restock two big fan favorite playmats that have been sold out. Servant of Endymion playmat and the Trip Electrum playmat, which is on sale for $39.99 on TripGaming.com. So get yours now to destroy your opponents with the most unrated deck. So for video, smash the subscribe button. Let's go! Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you a replay um, of me piloting generators using cards from the um, Eternity Code. So finally, a lot of the cards that were, uh, you know, only available in the OCG have now been available in the TCG. So the generators um, have gotten like a huge, I think, uh, power boost. Um, a lot of cards such as Loper um, and like uh, Horror has like really helped the deck evolve to like... Um, be able to like i think consistently put out negates and like have like i think more consistent disruption now um because the problem before was like of a lot of it was due to the consistency it got like a better normal summon which is always good for like um a, a rogue deck just as generators um so without further ado i'll walk you guys through um you know this uh replay so i win the dice roll here um and i drew like really really well um so what i'm gonna start off with i'm gonna activate uh extravagance uh to draw two um, I see I do this like bait to see how he if he has like an ash blossom which is fine because I'll probably just call by it or I just might keep it just so I can like use lone fire to get to uh, Mardell and then Mardell to like play from there uh, I open up terraforming and Chuya so the first thing I do is I try to bait out his cards I go lone fire into another lone fire um, then lone fire again to a Mardell uh, Mardell gets me any generator card which is uh, very key um, it doesn't just get you the field spell, it gets you any generator card. So what do I search here? I search uh, boss quest, a lot of card that people don't know. So what boss quest does is it unbricks you because if you really think about generators, like all of them are inherent bricks in your hand. So uh, what you have to do is um, uh, you search boss quest because it shuffles back to your bricks and then it searches you two playable spells and traps. So that's like always nice. So what you do is you activate boss quest. I put this on my field so because I have to, I have to put it on the bottom of my deck uh, on resolution. So I search boss room and I search uh, boss fight. So let me explain to you guys what these cards do. Boss room says that whenever your opponent activates a card response to the generator card effect, I can discard any card and then uh, it changes the effect. So why this is like really broken is because if I try if I activate boss stage, which is the field spell, and they chain cosmic cyclone, I can chain boss room so that it changes the cosmic cyclone effect to like um, that we both draw one card, which um, inherently triggers. Uh, stage by the way and then i searched boss fight just because i knew i was gonna get the terraforming which would get me access to field spell anyway so it just made more sense there uh then i'm gonna uh activate and get uh boss stage here use boss stage uh set two uh, which is boss fight and boss room and then set call bot i have ash boss in my hand this is effectively if you really think about it is like one two this will get you three interruptions actually four interruptions uh five uh, six this is like six interruptions so like you have uh trius which is also a new card in attorney code that really helped the deck by the way so i'll quickly explain right now it says tribute any three uh, fairy monsters for cost so what you can do is you'll activate boss room dumping this to the graveyard and then this has a hand or graveyard effect so it triggers both away and it's a quick effect so you can tribute up to three fairy monsters all the boss stage uh, tokens are all fairies so that's like why this card really synergizes really well it's also level nine but when you tribute three fairy monsters what it does is it says that it can pop one card non target on the opponent's field and you can draw, draw two cards so this card's like absolutely insane like you can draw into more hand traps uh, which is why it's this card is nice so I think uh, he's going to draw, I'm going to trigger Boss Sage and then summon Loper. Um, uh, but then he activates Ash Blossom on my Sage. I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to call by the Grave it, whatever. Um, and then summon Loper. And then Loper is insane, which is the new card of the Eternity Code for the Generator deck. What it says is all Generator Monsters gain 1,000 attack or defense. That means all the tokens are now 2,500 B-Sticks. So like, uh, imagine trying to beat over that, right? Like Dark Magician can't even do it. So, um, and then during the main phase, it also has a quick effect, tribute any token and summon any level 9 generator monster. This is effectively the new normal summon for the deck, which trumps Lone Fire, um, because it's a quick effect, so it can, like, dodge Imperm really easily, so that's why, and or Veiler, which is why it's super nice. And then summon any level 9 generator, so it's like a free extra body and buffs the whole board. So, um, you're gonna get the tokens right here, um, and then use, um, 
uh, then uh, on at the start of main phase, uh, he's just gonna automatically scoop because he's you know kind of just foresees that this board is like literally unbreakable. I plus too much, and then like, the stage every turn just gets me like disruption. It's kind of like Eldritch in that sense, like that every turn I'm getting constantly plusing off of the, the field spell. So uh, you better have the Cosmic Cyclone for it. Uh, but even if you did, I had two forms of interruption, so it's like counteract that. So it's too much. Uh, here I open up uh, like super bricky. I open up Nihog and Har, so I'm basically playing with like three cards in my hand, which is like uh, like kind of bad. But at least I drew the stage, which I feel confident about. He's gonna set three. I don't know what he's playing at the time because he automatically scoop. I open up Extravagance for turn, which is like nice because an Extravagance is gonna bait out an interruption. Of course, gets Ash, as expected. Activate Boss Stage, pass on the stage. Cosmic Cyclone at end phase, unfortunate. And then he's gonna activate red. I'm gonna activate Ash to hit the red so that he doesn't get a Lord. If he gets Lord access, then he can ban short on his turn, get counter trap, and then seal the deal from there. So I was able to like kind of play through that. He's gonna set one and then use that to get a conquistador. Um, I'm gonna draw for turn, have call by the grave set, and then pass. He's gonna activate double lands to get Pallades on his turn, which makes sense. He's gonna overlay into Pallades like as expected. Um, and then uh, he's gonna bounce the call by the grave by detaching one just so he can banish this at end phase to get uh, access to Lord. Um, so he's gonna swing for 25, uh, activate um, the black, um, but uh, I, I accidentally drew a card. I uh, just see if it, I drew a card to see if it's worth scooping or not. Uh, he's like totally cool with it. We're just like playing um, at this point. It, it is still a ranked game, but he he's a viewer and like he totally understands. It's like just a friendly game. Uh, we're gonna go uh, normal summon Loper and then look what happens here. He's gonna use it for cost strike. Yep, that's a scoop. Um, I now uh, elect to go first and then. Uh, we're gonna see my opening hand. My opening hand is super busted. I have stage plus Loper. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna bait out any hand traps with Loper. Use Loper, like I said, it's a better lone fire. Tribute for cost. Summon Mardell. Mardell effect. He's gonna chain impermanence, which is perfect because now I can activate boss stage and special summon my generators and then not have it get impermanence. Um, I also have a boss fight, which is a second field spell. So he's gonna activate cosmic cyclone on the boss stage. But guess what? I act. I chain Lancia, so he can't be banished. And then you can't really play from there. And then I'm gonna summon the counter. Uh, this essentially it's like a solemn, or like a solemn uh, judgment, I guess, because it can like negate um, anything. Um, so what what, do you, what you're doing here is um, essentially uh, it can like tribute two generators um, for cost and negate the activation of any card or effect. So it's like really really nice. So then you get three tokens off the boss stage, which is like so for free. Um, I don't summon Loper here because um, I, anticip I anticipated he was going to activate like a power card in M1 and I, I didn't want to have to chain Loper and then get Horror, I wanted to be able to like negate it right away. He tries to activate Extravagance here but under Lancia he can't so uh, he's going to just put them back. Um, and then he activates uh, Elixir right there, I'm going to just negate that and then he's going to set 2 and pass. At end phase I lose my token. I draw and to Z Shifter which is unfortunately dead now, um, I'm going to activate the boss fight and use boss fight effect to activate another field spell which would trigger the summon uh, Ugarda here. I, I think I was playing very aggressively which I think was incorrect. But I, I always try to push for game because I'm such a uh, I'm such an aggressive player sometimes. Here I'm going to use Loper and then use Loper effect to tribute stuff to get U uh, Ugarda. Uh, Ugarda has a nice quick effect where you can target one card in the field and banish it. So I'm gonna, I, the reason why I want to push for game because I have Ash too. So if he tries to activate red um, which I expected him to have then I can just Ash the red here and then just kill him. Um, so I attacked with horror first to deal damage uh, because I'm going to tribute horror later. Activate red, I'm going to activate uh, Ash Blossom. There's the active Conquistador. I made a big misplay here. I thought Garda was tribute uh, one for cost, not two, but he's like, oh, tribute two. So I was like, oh my god, I misplayed. Um, but I like didn't want to take that playback because I already committed. So I'm attacking for 22 and I still feel safe. I had boss stage still in the, the, the field. Um, and then he's going to um, go off for turn. And... Uh, uh, I don't know when he top deck, but he has the Cosmic Cyclone, unfortunately, which is unfortunate. Uh, then he's, I knew he has Extravagance from the falling turn, so I've, I was in a really bad position here. Like I said, I made a misplay. I shouldn't have used a Garda. I shouldn't have pushed for game, but that's okay. We learned from this. Uh, and then at this point, he, uh, I think he, uh, because of using Cosmic, he goes down to 800, which is totally fine. Uh, because he can't use Eldlin now, uh, so he can't like surf, so he's just gonna get like lands at this point, which is like okay. Um, I get really lucky and I top deck the boss stage, which is like the saving grace. Um, I try to like bait out stuff first with Ugarda attacking directly. He's gonna summon the big uh, guardian defense mode and then activate boss stage from there. Um, I use the effect to summon Loper and then trigger unlimited tokens. Um, and then um, now at this point, I feel like a lot more control. I just went like plus three on him, so he's gonna use uh. 
black to summon a lord. So at this point, what I do is I then activate Loper to summon Hela. Hela is like the monster reborn for the deck by tributing one. So then uh, what I do is I he's gonna activate Conquistador. I chain Hela and then I chain uh, Ugarda um, to banish the Lord so that because Lord is no longer on the field, Conquistador resolves, but it doesn't have Lord on the field, so it doesn't pop. And then I get back my um, Har off of uh, Hela, which means Har can then um, become an Omni Negate. So I have I banish one of his Lords, and then I have an Omni Negate. And then every time he summons another Lord, I keep using Ugarda and then keep popping and keep banishing his Lord. So I just like it's too much control at this point. He's also at 800 life points, so he can't really do much. Um, so he's just gonna essentially proceed to scoop. I show my hand with the Shifter. He's gonna show me Elden, which I predicted he had. Uh, he also has Evenly Match, which unfortunately is dead. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it guys, that's GG, and now we'll walk into uh, the deck profile. So let's get right into it. Hey guys, so now we're, I'm gonna go into um, the, the deck profile. So, um, so you have the first row, which is like essentially like the bricks of the deck. They're all level nines, aka like bricks, like brick city right here. But it's like not as bad as the boss quest, they shuffle the back. So let me explain to you what each of them do. Uh, you kind of like know just from like uh, watching the gameplay before, but Har, what it does is it's an Omni Gate. Tribute any two generator monsters, you get a lot of generator monsters off of the uh, boss stage. But essentially, by tributing any two, you can negate any card or effect activation, which is insane because it can actually negate scale effects as well because it says effect or card. So, horror is like, really nice. It also has another quick effect, which is kind of like a uh, pseudo dark law. So, what it does is whenever the opponent adds a card from the deck to the hand, except during the draw phase, you make your opponent send any monster from the hand or field to the grave, which is a mandatory effect, uh, which is like really nice. Uh, they can't all resolve it which uh, uh then they essentially uh, it just fizzles but it, you still uh can activate that so it's like really nice you have Mardell, which is probably one of the best um like uh i guess card but it's also one of the, like the worst cards because it breaks you if it's in your hand but it's really good if it's in your deck because when you summon it off um uh, the special summon you can add any generator card but the problem with Mardell is if you top deck it, then essentially the Lone Fire Blossom doesn't have a target, so Lone Fire Blossom becomes Bricks. Um, but Mardell is like really nice. You have to play it; just adds like a lot of consistency. You play Ugarda, which is like a card that's like really really insane. It's like a ABC Buster Dragon. Like uh, you can like tribute two generator monsters and then banish one card on the field. It's like pretty nice. Nihog is like a solemn warning. This card is like absolutely insane. Tribute any only one generator monster and can negate the summon of anything. So it's pretty pretty broken. Uh, you usually summon this against like normal summon reliant decks, um, so that's why this card is nice. You play Tri three Trias, which is like the new card, like I said before. It's a quick effect, tribute three fairies, pop one, draw two. Nothing to say about this, absolutely broken. The only thing, the only interaction that I would say ever came up in was um, so against like my opponent, he made a Appalooza. Um, so what I did was I did Loper effect and then. Uh, he would chain Appalooza, then I chain uh, Trius, tributing Loper and then two other tokens, summoning, uh, popping the Appalooza. So it does because it doesn't get to uh, reduce its attack, it cannot negate Loper, which means I get to draw two cards and resolve Loper, which is kind of busted. Uh, Dovalus, which is like you kind of have to play just because of the fact that uh, what it does is if you hard draw all your bricks, it summons the bricks from the hand. So this is what it, yeah, that's essentially what it does. It summons any generator monster from your hand. So if you like break and draw too many generator monsters in your hand, it just lets you like uh, unbreak by summoning them from the hand. Um, so that's nice. And then did you play double Hella? I think she's like one of the best ones because Hella is like uh, the way you recycle back your resources. You can special summon any generator monster from your graveyard and then keep playing. Uh, Loper, which is the new card out of like the um, Eternity Code, uh, this card is absolutely busted. Uh, essentially, it buffs all your generator monsters by a thousand during my opponent's turn, so all the tokens can't be run over because a lot of the time they try to run over your tokens, so you have less cards to tribute for effects and stuff, which is I think irrelevant. And then Loper itself becomes a 2500 beast stick during the opponent's turn. It's insane. Like you know, like hard becomes 4000, 4000. Like it becomes obelisk a tormentor literally. Um, and then hard effect is a, it's a quick effect tribute for cost, which is really nice. That's why it's better than Lone Fire, but. I like, um, I have, I had a conversation with Jesse, like, cause he's like my coach, um, just for like various other things. And he was telling me some theory and like, I really agreed on his, like, that you only need really five normal summons in the deck. And that's why I only play two Lone Fire. Uh, cause it also like, it kind of blows to draw multi, like double Lone Fire too, when you play it as a three of, and like, so it's also that, and like, you only really need two. Um, just because it's an extra normal summon in case you don't draw the Loper and if you draw Loper, Lone Fire, you just summon Loper anyways and then like, Lone Fire is just like the discard which is like okay I guess but like I said it's consistency you want to see like your field spell Lone Fire gets you to Mardell which gets you to field spell which if you don't see your field spell you get FTK'd by yourself so like it's like you have to like play this card um, it also thins out your deck which is kind of nice I guess 
Uh, three Ash, three Imperm, which is like, of course, a staple. But then the thing that's a spice is the Dimension Shifter. Dimension Shifter is like busted. There's nothing much to say about this card. I mean, you activate this, it basically says uh, you go first, even if you're going second, because uh, any card they uh, try to use gets banished. So, like, the Rock deck literally cannot play because all the cards get banished, which means they don't get to summon Block Dragon. So, that's like insane. They just literally go pass. And then I'm like, okay, boss stage, game. Uh, then you activate Call by the Grave. Call by the Grave is like an offensive and defensive card. Offensively, it can be used to banish Black Dragon, El Lich, and uh, a lot of really powerful cards in the meta right now. Um, but then defensively, it lets your cards resolve, so that's why I really like Call by the Grave. Um, terraforming and then four boss and three boss age consistency. Uh, three more boss fight, which is consistency. This is essentially three more boss stage. It lets you activate a field spell from the deck or grave, so it lets actually recur back the boss stage, um, which is like really nice. And then automatically your opponents draw one card. So then on resolution, when boss stage, because it becomes activated, you can then uh, activate, like having boss fight lets you automatically resolve boss stage even um, whenever you want, which is nice. Boss quest, uh, I originally played three boss quests, but then I took out one of the boss quests from room. So what boss quest does is like I said, it unbricks you. Uh, it adds, it reveals a generator monster and then uh, it puts it back into your, the bottom of your deck. Um, and then you add uh, fight and room. Uh, you can add room and stage as well. Uh, the reason why you add room and stage is because um, room protects your stage from getting uh, interrupted. Uh, then you play room. So what room does, like I said before, is a um, whenever they try to respond to any generator card or effect, including the monsters itself, right? Like uh, essentially, you can then chain the change that card text to become both player draws one card. So that's a really nice triggering boss stage, of course, which is super free. Then three extravagance because you know if a deck doesn't use the extra deck, then there's no reason not to play this card. This card is absolutely insane. And then. Um, and then uh, for the extra deck, you play double nine cat lives. This card is nice because it's a monster reborn for the archetype in case you run out of Hellas, um, which sometimes happen. Uh, so that's why you go into the nine cat lives to bring back Hella, Hella to bring back another card. So that's always like a good tech. Also, it's nice because Hella, um, it's this card says that whenever cards are especially coming back from the graveyard, they actually cannot be targeted, so it protects your Hella from getting uh, impermed. I guess that's kind of nice. Comes up. Uh, True Kings of All Calamities, I mean, it's a level 9 deck, you make this card, it's FTK, you know, going, like, so, after you disrupt your opponent, you come back on your turn, you make VFD in the extra monster zone, which gives you full use of your main monster zone, and this card is just automatically game. You play double Earth Slicer, because it's, a uh, it's a pop 2, uh, which is always nice, attach any material, as much material as you want, then target as many cards on the field and pop them. It becomes super nice because it's a 3100 B6, so and then when an opponent destroys an opponent's cards by battle, you can actually attach that monster to this card as material, so you can attack and then pop three. Kind of nice. Uh, then you play uh, IP because uh, you gain so many free resources, uh, so you just use IP to like interact with your opponent even more on their turn. Uh, you play the Nightmare Phoenix Cerberus and the Unicorn just to like uh, shuffling back is like really important, and then of course like the pop and the Phoenix just to like out like sometimes like annoying cards. Then you play three BLS because they're all level nines, which means uh, if you have a BLS set up with all the generated cards, uh, it's really hard for them because you have to commit to a lot of resources out the BLS, which can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects, which is like uh, really hard for like Elich, for example, to like out. And you also have like the full generator lineup, so it just becomes game from there. Uh, every turn, BLS will just banish a card on the field, non-target, so it just becomes Ugarda Ugarda on steroids. Um, so uh, from there, that's pretty much it. Uh, I would also walk you guys into my side deck theory, but at this point in time, I just, it's no point because like the meta is always continuously changing and you have to adapt your side deck to it. I think that's like a video for another time where I'll talk more about like side decking theory um, and like uh, what cards decide in and out, what cards are impactful in the current meta. But uh, overall guys, thank you so much. Uh, please hit the subscribe button for Triv. Let's get him to 30K. And then also please check out my YouTube channel uh, at pack, unders um, at pack underscore um, official underscore TCG. Um, and then yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and also leave a comment in the comment section below uh, your thoughts on the generated deck and its relevance within the meta um, But other than that guys, thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next one yeah,